Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is the second lecture of our Neo4j tutorial series. In the last lecture, we have seen all about what a graph database is and its basic principle and how they differ as compared to the NoSQL as well as the relational databases. So we will keep discussing about it more. So in this lecture, let's discuss about what are the similarities as well as the dissimilarities between relational database, NoSQL databases as well as the graph databases and what major benefits graph databases puts onto the table as compared to its competitors. So without further any ado, let's get into it. So we will first talk about the relational databases. So for several years and decades, developers have tried to bring relationship as well as the semi-structured data into the relational databases. But it is very hard to accomplish because relational databases are evolved and developed only to codify the papers and the documentation and it represent it in the tabular format and it does that pretty well. It is well managed to store the structured data which can be represented as a row and columns. But if we want to bring the relationships, we have already discussed in the previous lecture that it is very hard to bring relationships into the relational databases and it also does that but at the modeling stage only and you need to join the two tables to bring the relationships into it but it is well suitable for the smaller data set but what about if you have an organization which is generating millions of records every day so how you can deal with the relational databases if we need to analyze that data which is stored already in the relational databases then its transactional capabilities will be awesome but when you want to build an analytics platform onto it, then it struggles because if you are submitting a very heavy and intensive query like the join queries and if your board tables contains millions of records, then that query will struggle and give you the performance issues. So that is the reason relational databases are not suitable to incorporate relationships as we talk about the graph databases because graph databases embrace relationships and their data is connected to each other so both the nodes will point to each other which gives us the benefit of the index free adjacency okay so let us discuss this with some simple example so we have a data set here we have the data set of the customers who brought some products so this is like a transactional centric model so in this we have multiple tables so we have the user table which have all the attributes related to a particular user. Then we have the order table which has only the attributes related to the order which is like order ID as well as the user ID. And we also have the line item in which we have the product ID and the quantity. And we also have the product table in which we have all the details about the product. So in this case maintaining the foreign keys will be a huge task to maintain so that the database administrator will have to take this responsibility and the maintenance would be higher if we compared it to the graph databases. So in this case, let's say the reciprocal queries will be very much expensive. Let me tell you with some simple example. So the first scenario in which if we want to know all the products which a particular customer has brought then that is a reasonable query and you will get the results. But what if you get the reciprocal? You want the reciprocal of this query, which means that what customers has purchased a specific product. So that becomes very much complex and that join intensive query will be performance poorer and its performance will become poorer and poorer once you got the millions of records and the data is growing gradually then that will be impossible to run in this case of scenario. So you may ask, it is not that much impossible, right? Yes, it is not impossible to run that query. But let's say we introduce an index. So index will help us execute this query. But if we have like another scenario, like what if, what are the customers has brought a particular product that also brought that other product, then that becomes even more difficult to run in case of relational databases. So let's discuss this with some simple example and let's see how the complexity will increase and where the graph databases come into picture to solve that issue. 
okay so we have a simple example we have two tables in which we have a person detail in which we have id of that particular person and the name of that person and in the person thread we have all the information about the friends of that particular person so by seeing these details we already know that the id number two which is bob has two friends in the person friend table having the id of 1 and 99 which is alice and zach so if you want to answer this simple question like who are bob's friends then we can do that with simple sql query so as you can see this query is pretty simple and this will not be much more expensive on our data set okay so now let's talk about the reciprocal scenario to answer who is friends with bob so looking at this table we already know that the answer is alice because zach doesn't consider bob its friends so to implement that it is also a very simple scenario so as you can see the query is fairly simple just the difference is between the friend id and the person id which has shifted its position but in the database side it is quite an expensive task so looking at this query you may ask this is like a simple query how it can be expensive but to implement this query it will have to scan the whole person friend table so that is the reason this query will perform poorer and poorer once we have millions of record in our person friend table okay so now let's take one step ahead because we don't like simple stuff right so we have another scenario so in this we want to find alice's friends of friends so by seeing this this is also not very complex query it is fairly simple to achieve and it is doable and you will get the result in reasonable amount of time as well but it is very computationally aggressive query and it will take consume a lot of resources on the back end but it doesn't give you that much of the value because if you want to get more deeper into the network like if you want to know the alice's friends of friends of friends that will be three degrees apart from each other so in that case your queries will have to consume a lot of computation so that will be deteriorating your query performance and you will get your results very inefficiently so that is the biggest disadvantage of the relational databases because they don't embrace the relationships because in the real world we have recommendation system as well as the fraud analytic systems in which the deeper network is what counts and gives us the more insights of your data so in that case relational databases will lack and the more complex queries will get slower and slower so to solve this issue we have brought the graph databases where we have the connected data of nodes and relationships which can give you the same complexity within a seconds so that is the biggest advantage of the graph databases because if we go like 10 degrees or more into the graph then that also a localized query and your query will be localized to a certain portion of the graph which gives you the result within a seconds if we compare it to the relational databases your query will grow and the performance will deteriorate due to the complexity of the joining as well as the amount of data it has to handle so that is the reason relational data sets are not that much suitable for such kind of scenarios they will still give you answers of the simple queries but if you go and want to dig a little deeper into your data then that time relational databases will not be suitable choice for you okay so now let's talk about the nosql databases so whether your nosql database is a document based database or key value pair or the column store databases like the cassandra it will lack the relationship as well but you can introduce the relationship by joining and introducing a field between the aggregators so in this case as you can see we got the order id so for example we got the order id 1 2 3 4 which also referenced in the another aggregate which is which has the order id as well as the item present in that particular id so we can have the relationship from the user to the order it is a one sided relationships between the user and order and the user is pointing to the order 
So you may think that we have brought the relationships in the NoSQL databases, but you are wrong. So joining these two aggregates requires to join those at the application level, which becomes a very intensive task and your queries will deteriorate gradually. Because this relationship is a one way and there is no backward relationships from the order to the user. So we will use the ability to execute and answer a particular scenario. So for example, if you want to get answer of who has brought a particular product. So in that time, we don't have the backward relationship. So we will use that capability and to do such kind of analysis. So perhaps if you want to build a recommendation system and we have this type of structure and your data is stored in a NoSQL database, you need to bring that and export that data into a Hadoop or any other analytics platform to do such analysis. So which is not ideal. So what you can do is at this level, you can bring the backward relationship which can solve your issue. But still, this will be limited to some of the scenarios. You cannot cover all the scenarios and answer all the question in your recommendation system. So that is not an ideal way to incorporate both sides of relationship. Let's take a simple example for that as well. Okay, so as you can see in this structure, we got again the social network of friends. And as you can see, we got the Alice, Bob and Zach as users and they have the property in the document as friends. So in the friends property, it is only showing the immediate friends of all these users like Alice has friends with Bob, Bob has friends Alice and Zach and Zach only considers Alice to be his friends. And we also incorporate relationships with that as, as well. So we can solve simple problems like who are the friends of Alice? that is Bob. Who are the friends of Bob? Who is Alice and Zach? But what if we want to do a reciprocal search of our data? So who are, who considers Bob to be its friends? So to solve that problem, to find Bob in the friends properties, our query needs to scan whole records. So that will be very expensive. So you have to make sure that what is your problem statement? That is the most important thing to ask if you are designing a recommendation system. So in those cases, we don't have a clear winner because relational databases and non-SQL databases will act poorer in this kind of scenarios. So now let's talk about the graph databases and how they embrace relationships into them. Okay, so now let's talk about the graph databases and how they embrace the relationships. So as you can see here, in our previous examples, we have only seen the simple structures like the user and the friends table. So it will not give us that much value, but because in real world, the connected data will be will represent many relationships and different kinds of nodes in the schema. So as you can see here, our graph has grown gradually and incorporated many details here because we, our social network will contain different kinds of relationships. So this is this way we can learn that who is friends of who, who married who, who is the boss of who and so on. We can get answer to many question and many engines like the recommendation engine needs all this data it should not rely on limited kind of data and to incorporate this we don't want to change the schema because graph databases doesn't have a fixed schema it has the flexible schema so if you want to implement the same in the relational databases you want to incorporate so many relationships and complexity in your schema which is not at all possible at a production level so if you have millions of records and you have a connected set of information like the social network, then graph databases will make more sense and I'll get lot more value from this information. It is visually representing that this is a social network graph. It is not just rows and columns. It has its structure. It has relationships and two nodes are getting point to each other. And as you can see, all these labels are user, but it is not necessary. This is just an example. As you can see, we got a lot of many relationships incorporated in this social network 
we will also incorporate different labels as well because a particular label has a particular role assigned to it in the network because as you can see we got all the users so this represents a particular person and the name of that person as a property on that label or we can say a node so this represents a record but what if a particular user has a car so we will bring a car label in our graph so let's say for example we have a mercedes car connected to the alice but as you can see zack grace dev and so many people also has mercedes car then all that data is connected to that particular node which has the label car so that way our social network graph will grow and grow and if you want to build queries around it it will take the advantage of the index free adjacency because all the nodes are pointing to each other using the relationship so that way your queries will be localized to a specific portion of the graph and the performance will be way more faster than the relational databases and you keep get into deeper and deeper so as you can see this will make the path so this path orientation in the graph will embrace the relationships as well as well as the performance of our graph queries so let's compare the performance of the graph database as compared to the relational databases once we get deeper into our network okay so as per the neo4j in action there was a study that is conducted on a social networking graph which contains millions of records and each person has around 50 friends for average so as you can see we have compared the rdbs execution time compared it to the neo4j execution time so neo4j as you already know is like the most popular graph databases in the world today so as you can see it shows us once we got the depth increasing which means that the first solution is the first problem is finding the friends of friends that is very simple to achieve and we have also saw that in the previous topic as well when we talk about the relational databases so as you can see we have the depth of 2 which means the records are 2 degrees apart from each other so as you can see the execution time is not that much and there is not much difference between these two execution times so it is in seconds and we have got 2500 records from this query but once if your depth is getting increasing so as you can see we got the analysis up to 5 degrees so as you can see we got the depth of 5 as well which is the maximum so as you can see rdbms rdbms query doesn't finished at all so that query kept on running and running on those million records and we got the results of over 8 lakh read records in just 2 seconds in neo4j so that shows us the power of graph databases and the connections and the power of relationships in case of the social network graph so this is just an example there are so many graphs that are available today and many organizations have built their own knowledge graph to get insights from it and build a very comprehensive data solution like the fraud analytics solution as well as the product recommendation system or the social network graph and many platforms like the linkedin have their own social network of their users which gets the which gets them the power of the graph databases so when you go into the linkedin and search for the second degree and third degree connection that is all it is it is like a graph database is getting you the results within a blink so that is the power of the graph databases and how they embrace relationships so as you can see for such kind of use cases only the graph databases will make more sense okay so this is all about today's lecture but we have more to come so just stay tuned because our next lecture we are going to talk about data modeling with graphs so if you haven't subscribed yet Just subscribe to the channel and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates. Thanks for watching.